Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. This guest that I have has been a very, very good friend of mine for a very long time. Um, I've never been much of a social media guy, and I finally just had to get Twitter you know, a couple years ago, and this is one of the first people I came across. We started talking about baseball, and we became very, very good friends very, very quickly. And I just wanted to take a moment to introduce him and his amazingness to the whole world. So joining me today is one of my best friends in the entire world, Mr. Matt Harvey, not the baseball pitcher. Matt, <laughs> how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing good. Is you, he back home from bowling? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it, it's so amazing to have you here. Um, yeah. You are not only a very good friend, and a very, very big baseball fan, something you and I have connected on for a very long time. Um, you're very, very open about who you are as a person. And before we get to the reason why you're here, I want people that don't know you to get to know you a little bit because sure. you're genuinely one of the kindest and nicest people I've ever had the privilege of meeting. So tell us a little bit about yourself here, Matt. Oh, I have autism. I've, you know, had some struggles when I was younger, dealing with, you know, having, not knowing who I was, basically, in high school. I was bullied a lot then, but that's just because, you know, people didn't know who I was, because I, I was kind of lost and didn't know who I was myself, mm -hmm. until I got diagnosed with autism, and then now it works out a lot better, because now I just take some medication, and, you know, I work at the Superstar. I've been pushing carts for 15 years, so I got to throw out the first pitch at the Blue Jays game. <laughs> That's a moment that, you know, you can never forget and right. still feels unreal. <laughs> and one thing I want to say about you, Matt, is you are very, very open and honest about your autism. And yeah. what I think is so special about it is uh, I know that it's probably weird for you to hear this, <clears throat> but you are such yeah. a big inspiration to a lot of people. You know, I like you're full that. of positivity. Yeah. yeah. And when I'm having good days, when I'm having good days, when I'm having right. bad days, you know, we all have bad days. Exactly. Uh, but overall, you're just a positive person. You're a big light to us. And like I said, you're one of the very first people that I connected with through wow. social media and we became very good friends very fast yeah. because of totally. our love of the game of baseball and um obviously you are a huge huge <laughs> toronto blue jays fan. yeah although uh, i can be a shitty fan sometimes to be honest <laughs> with you sometimes i don't take losing very well <laughs> it's funny because i remember when we were uh because obviously we're very good friends but me and matt like to jab at each other a little bit when the tigers <laughs> and the blue jays are playing <laughs> And uh, I remember we're, I'm watching the game, and the Tigers are winning at this point. And I get a DM from Matt, and he says, your damn Tigers are going to cost yeah. us the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure that actually happened. You know, in 1987, <laughs> you guys actually were the reason we didn't make the playoffs because that, that had the lace, really late turn where everything went from the Jays going well to the Tigers just kind of, you know. But I mean, yep. it's a rivalry, Tigers and Blue Jays. Well, was a rivalry. It's not. I still consider it a rivalry. It's it's funny because I, me and my son, make it a point to uh -huh. go to Comerica every year for the Tigers uh -huh. and Blue Jays game. Really? Just because the Blue Jay fans, one, they travel yeah. very well. Oh yes. And two, they are the most fun fans to be totally. around because they will rib with you. They will tease you, but they never get dirty. They never get no. mean. No. And yeah, totally. I have a huge love and a huge respect for the team up north that they're just – Especially love since team. you're so close to border to Windsor. So a lot of Windsor fans are Tigers fans too. So, yeah, you know, you got a bit of a mix of uh, Tigers fans, especially older fans because a lot of older fans remember the Jack Morris days. Oh, yeah. The, uh, you know, Bobby Higginson days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, I, I love your baseball knowledge in general, and I wanted to talk to you a little yeah. bit more about, your, you know, your love of the game and your knowledge of the game. Yeah. Um, have you been just a lifetime fan as long as you can remember uh, you were a baseball fan? 80s, or? about 1989 or so, I guess, was when I first saw a game, I think, mm -hmm. sometime in the 80s anyway, when Older Rude played, I'm pretty sure. Way, way back, yeah. So the 90s, 2000s, all. I kind of stopped, honestly, I stopped kind of right between high school. 
Mm-hmm. Kind of sucks because I didn't really get to see Clemens pitching for the Jays much. I was kind of too busy with high school and working right. and stuff like that and dealing with the uh, stuff I was dealing with, with, uh, you know, trying to graduate and all this kind of stuff. So that, those few years, I kind of lost track. But then once about 2002 came around, I was so rooting on holiday. So, you know, right there, <laughs> a little jersey I got over, like a little picture I got over there. Oh, yeah. I can see it. It sucks that he died. <laughs> yeah, that's a terrible, terrible yeah. tragedy, man. See, I was supposed to meet Roy Holiday. Turned out uh, the uh, Ferguson Jenkins had an event and he got stuck in a hurricane. And then it was about a few months later when I came to work and one of my buddies that I work with, like it was a cold kind of day and he just, he was done work. He came back. I'm like, why is he coming over here now? He told me the right holiday news. So <laughs> oh. like rough when I heard that, I'm like, what? <laughs> Cause I was at home. I didn't know anything about what was happening. Mm-hmm. So it was all news to me. I you see when I'm at work, I don't have any social media, so a lot of times right. anything big happens, I'll ask my buddy. He'll let me know <laughs> anything that happens, a big trade or somebody dying or other things right. like that. So, like, you know, that kind of news kind of really, like, what? Because, you know, your buddy comes back from just finishing a shift and walks over across the road. You're thinking, what's going on? So now every time he comes back from work and does something like that, I'm thinking, who died? <laughs> yeah, who died? <laughs> it's funny because, like, I, I, you know, with with celebrities, you always feel a, a bit of sadness. But oh, yeah. when it's somebody like, like for me, it was you know when Al Kaline passed away, that oh, was yeah. a rough yeah, one. Right. When, yeah. when Mr. Illich passed away, that was rough. Norm Macdonald, yeah. the comedian, when he died, that was a really hard yeah. pill for me to swallow. Robin Williams. But <laughs> Robin Williams was a big one. That guy yeah. influenced my life in more ways than I can even talk about. He's very funny. Yep. And obviously, I, I want to talk to you about horror movies, Matt. But one last thing yeah. before we go into horror movies, because I know that you're a big horror movie fan as well. Yeah. Um, I, I talked earlier about how you are an inspiration because you don't use your autism as a crutch. You don't let it define no. you. You are Matt Harvey. You are not yeah. autism. And yeah. if there's somebody out there watching right now that's kind of having an identity crisis, finding mm-hmm. out about their autism, what is a piece of advice that you could give them to try to help them to get oh. where you are? You know, just, uh, you know, get diagnosed and, you know, you actually feel really, really better about yourself because once you know what you have, then you know that you, I feel like a lot of times the cases with autism is knowing your weaknesses, knowing your strengths. Self-awareness is something that uh, I feel like is something that really does help. See, like a lot of times, a lot of people that don't know who they are. They don't really know like what their weaknesses are. Like sometimes it can suck, but yeah. it also is good because then you know what you can't do very well. So you try to figure out a way to cope with that. Mm-hmm. You try to figure out a way to, you know, my strengths are, you know, numbers, stuff like that. I know <laughs> statistics right. are good. And uh, I like weather stats, weather numbers, you know, stuff like that. So, well, it's yeah, funny when you say that you're a numbers guy and you love stats. Yeah. It makes a lot That's of what I got into baseball. towards baseball. That's what I got into <laughs> baseball, really, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and it really does mean a lot to me. And something else I wanted to say to everybody, Matt is a genuine great guy and a great friend of mine. And he will be a great friend to you, too. And you can mm-hmm. become a great friend of his by following him on all of his social media, which I have down here in the description below. So make sure you're clicking these social media links. Make sure you're giving Matt a follow because you won't regret it. He's going to make you laugh. He's going to make you smile. Sometimes he's going to make you want to give him a hug, but it's just going to make you love him even more. So um, we kind of know who you are now, Matt. So now I would like to go back to the past. Obviously, I know you're a big horror movie fan. In order to to be a horror movie fan, horror had to start off for you somewhere, my friend. So um, what was the first horror movie you ever watched, Matt? I would say it's maybe... Poltergeist or one of these other ones like uh, maybe Nightmare on Elm Street or one of those type of movies. So I like watched a lot, mm-hmm. watched like tons of horror movies over the years. I uh, really like the Dawn of the Dead new one, which is actually made partly in Toronto. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah Dawn of the Dead 2013 is yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. one of those movies that I feel is one of the you know top 10 remakes yeah. of all time. I watched it so many times. I own it and I just watch it over and over. It's one of those movies you can watch over and over again. So I'm curious 
Did you see Terrifier 2 yet? I did. Um, I can say um, I really, really, really enjoyed the film. Uh Um, I think that it could have been 45 minutes shorter. Yeah, right. (laughs) Um, It's a little too long. But I think that – have you got to watch it yet? No, I haven't. I don't know if I want to. It seems a little too (laughs) – a little too gruesome for me. It, it is. Gruesome. It is bad. Like it is yeah. gruesome. But the, the big thing to me is you're getting more of the story of your hero this time, yeah. rather than mm-hmm. focusing on Art the Clown. Yeah. Um, you get a lot more about your heroes in this one. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I said, you could have cut 45 minutes off the movie. Yeah, and I think really, that it would have been fine. Really, but, I mean, um, seriously, two hours movie where it's just bleh. yeah. <laughs> but the, the story that you get of your heroes in this one. Um, it's worth the watch. So I think that you'll you'll you would I think you would enjoy it if if you yeah. like the first one, you'll mm-hmm. like the second one. There's nothing in the second one mm-hmm. that's any worse than the saw uh-huh. scene from the Whoa, first one. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. So um, with Poltergeist, Matt, you, you said yeah. that that was probably the first one you watched. Do you yeah. remember about how old you were the first time you had seen it? Let's see. Poltergeist was in the '80s, so probably like ten or you know twelve or something. Maybe like yeah. it's it's amazing because you know you're a young man watching this movie and you're watching a young lady in this movie kind of you know go through yeah. all these different things and I think that oh, makes yeah. it relatable because we're watching a peer in this yeah. situation. Uh-huh. Um, do you remember who you watched it with for the first time? Um, might have been just myself. Maybe I'm not mm. sure. I don't think so. Yeah, it was a, it's a pretty creepy movie. Uh, they made a remake, which was terrible, but. The first one is really creepy. It might have been my brother, in fact. He was creeped out by that movie. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he was very creeped even, out by that movie. What's even funnier to think about now is that movie is PG. Yeah, you know, I know, right? <laughs> like that movie came out before the PG-13 rating, yeah. and they didn't give it the R. And you go back know, and watch right? this movie, and you're like, PG? Yeah. Are we serious? <laughs> right? I know. There's the bodies. There's all sorts of stuff and the gruesomeness. Just like yeah. the movie I saw that I thought it's not a horror movie, but The Darkness or the one with um, Bill Kilmer where mm-hmm. he's eating lions. That movie oh, yeah. PG. <laughs> that movie it, it, was it, ultimate. Like, oh. There's so many movies like that came out, especially in the 80s and 90s. Uh-huh. That you're like, if those came out today, uh-huh. those would be a hard R. Like, I know, right? <laughs> there's no way this would be getting past the PG. Yeah, like, um, the, like Jaws, for example. It's a creepy movie. And they read it oh. PG, like, what the hell? <laughs> I completely think Jaws is a horror movie. I will fight <laughs> yeah. to the death that yeah. Jaws is 100% a horror yeah. movie. It scares the heck out of you. You're not going to want to go back in the water. You got to turn it, turn it. It's funny because I talk about how important music is to horror oh. movies. Yeah. I always talk about the three movies, Psycho, yeah. Yeah. Halloween, and Jaws, people that yeah. have never even seen these movies, oh. know, you know, how many times have we gone swimming and you have the one person going, duh, <laughs> you know? Like, it's true. It's so it's true. It affects us all so much. And yeah, that's what I love about horror movies is how universal they can be. Well, don't forget Jason movie or the oh. movie there, the person that's, you know, swimming by the, <laughs> you're swimming oh, yeah. The for whatever, you have the, you know, skinny <laughs> dipping and then somebody's like, <laughs> creeps you up. Shh, shh. <laughs> yes man you get something we've all done um yeah, totally. so back back to poltergeist here for a second brother we this is we were talking about how this movie is pg but it's scarier yeah. than hell oh, and it has a lot of scenes that are super yeah. effective um which scene would you say it was that affected you the most matt well i'd say my brother and me is that scene when the um when the like flood comes in there and all the like the tree comes flying into the and all the, like the bodies and everything, and uh, the girls all freaked out, and all these kinds of things are just falling, and you know this body falls out of the water there. <laughs> yeah, well, and it's funny because like you talk about that tree, and uh, I think you know when we're young, yeah, we we see trees all the time. We yeah. never look at trees. When it's dark. People. When it's dark, you look at the darkness, and the darkness makes it look freaky because yeah, so when the tree what's... crashes in through that window, yeah. uh huh. <laughs> At the end, you're talking about when they're in the swimming pool and those yeah, that's pretty. That's it. Start that's to rise. 
Uh-huh. Yes. Dude, yeah, that's like, the part. So awesome, man. <laughs> and is it's your creepy. brother, not, not to get too personal, but is your brother yeah. older or younger than you? He's younger than me. Okay. Yeah. So he probably pushed it a little bit. Hey, big brother Matt, let's watch this movie now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what honestly got us to watch that. I don't even remember. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> you guys were you guys were young and you seen a pretty young girl on a movie. You're like, let's watch this one. <laughs> so this this is also a movie that is uh-huh. like I said, there's a lot of effective scenery but there's a lot of very memorable scenes yeah um, what would you say your favorite scene from poltergeist would be oh well maybe the girl gets trapped in the tv maybe yeah well or no you know, when she starts like you know, all kinds of creepy stuff she does well especially when she turns around and does the yeah true <laughs> yeah, that's another one for me that was really freaky as a kid yeah i know um, right you're like whoa what's there <laughs> what's so coming we do talk about how remakes requel sequels are kind of all the rage and you already touched a little bit on how you did see the poltergeist remake and you didn't like it yeah um, it was pretty crappy this was back i believe that was back in 2015 when they did that yeah, one it was pretty you recent know, it's, been, it's been, been you know eight years now yeah. Is this a movie you would like to see them try to do again, or is this one you think they should no, just kind of? I never should have done by. it in the first place. You know, <laughs> there's certain movies they make remakes of, and I sit there and go, "Why? Yeah, why would you make a remake of this movie? Why would you make a movie a remake of that movie? Certain ones, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like those are classics, and you're like telling me why are you remaking it when you have a bunch of nobody actors? Right. <laughs> and how many times haven't they had the? Uh, that um well white zombie or rob zombie doing all this remakes of these really terrible halloween versions yeah <laughs> it's like how I'm, are you alone <laughs> right and i i, I agree with you new one. The, it's it's decided it's divisive you know some yeah. people either love it or they hate it um yeah. i'm in the boat of if there's people out there creating art i mm-hmm. hope that there's a group of people that it's yeah. made for that will enjoy it true um halloween ends was mm-hmm. not for me i yeah. um i found a lot of flaws in the film uh-huh. i want to see it just because i want to see how it ends just you know, right. those things i, right I hope myself. that when you watch it matt i hope that you love it i genuinely hope that you uh-huh. come out uh-huh. of your experience and you're like wow well, i just Look forward to him finally getting it. <laughs> well, I can't spoil if he does or not because I know he does. That have I've seen. I, I looked at the remarks, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he does. But just um, seeing it, just seeing it for myself. Yeah, it's so not the we, same. We you, can, you can about, tell. You can tell ahead. people all these things. It's much better to actually see it happen. Oh, you know, and especially the way that this one happens, you're, yeah. you're gonna want to see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. Like, I, reading it means nothing to me. It's like it guts. It's not right, what right. you're saying. <laughs> so we, we talked about Poltergeist being your first horror movie, but now, Matt, I want to go scream on you here for a second. I want to turn into Ghost Face here for a second. What's your favorite <laughs> scary movie, Matt? Uh, <laughs> what is your favorite horror movie of all time? Oh, Dawn of the Dead, maybe that one. That one the the remake? Yeah. Yeah, the remake, yeah. yes. One of my favorites, definitely. A lot of, I like a lot of zombie movies, to be honest with you. Like, um, <laughs> even if it's not really a completely a horror movie, it's a horror movie, but it's comedy too. Shaun of the Dead is really good. Oh, you um, know what? Like, I will, again, this is a movie I will fight to the death. Shaun uh-huh. of the Dead, 100% a horror so movie. So funny. So funny. It's a, <laughs> it's a horror comedy for sure, like, but the one really, yeah. really awful scene. You remember that one? There's Which one? Awful scene where the guy like he gets he gets attacked and they just keep attacking him and attacking him until he like like whatever that happens to him something gruesome. Oh, when they're out the bar window. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is right like before, the most gruesome scene where he gets his guts ripped out. Yes, <laughs> right before that, when Sean's mom dies, is one yeah. of the saddest moments of any movie I've ever seen in my oh, life. Oh, the saddest moment is in I Am Legend when oh. the dog dies. A dog died. <laughs> yeah, I can't yeah, disagree I with that one either. What you were talking about, um, the Dawn of the Dead remake, and something I yeah. love about that movie, uh-huh. it has a lot of what the original did, but they yeah. made it their own. And like, yeah, they made it so fast. You know, you're in for some deep shit when you see that first zombie walking and he turns, yeah. and he doesn't have an arm, 
and he just yeah. starts running at the people. I know, the hey, they're not they're not slow zombies like the old days. They're just yeah. super fast and so different. They're, it's such a good movie. The such first scene when his girl, when his uh, her boyfriend uh, suddenly turns and uh, <laughs> just starts chasing her down the road, and then all those people just keep getting scooped. And uh, <laughs> it's such a <laughs> such a great movie. Yeah, because you, I totally forgot at that moment. You have the little girl that comes yeah. into the room yeah. and bites the boyfriend. Yeah, well, yeah dude, well as so she sick. just, they don't really realize until he looks over at her face and yes. realizes he's one because she just was there the morning before, mm -hmm. and just kind of she was babysitting and hey, look at what I can do, and she's regular, and so mm -hmm. obviously, really rapidly, she was bitten. That's the thing; yes. they they change so fast. Yeah. It's not like the old times where it takes them a couple hours to change. No, as soon as they're bitten, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> gosh, I gotta watch this movie again. But yeah, it's um, good. Matt, I've had an amazing time talking to you and nice having some you. of these people that are watching get to know you a little better. But before I let you go, my friend, uh -huh. I got one last question for you. We're gonna bounce okay. back to Poltergeist, uh -huh. and what we're gonna do is rank this movie on a skull count. Now, Matt, we're not judging Poltergeist on acting, production, score, no. nothing like that. <laughs> what we're doing is judging Poltergeist on how much it affected you on your first viewing. So zero skulls being not effective, uh -huh. five being extremely effective. Uh -huh. four. You can use half and quarter skulls anywhere Give in the four. middle. Four? Give it a four. <laughs> That's a perfect rating for that movie. Yeah. For those of you that haven't seen it, I know you think, a movie made in the 80s that's PG. Yeah. Give it a chance. This movie is oh. scary as hell. Oh. No. Sure <laughs> so is. I said it at the beginning, guys, but I'm going to say it again. We're at the end of the third act and the curtain's about to drop. But before it does, I have Matt's social media links down here in the description. So make sure you're giving him a follow, not only to brighten up his day, but to brighten up your own because he's a great person to follow. And once Matt is your friend, he is like Chucky. He's your friend till the end. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Matt, please don't go anywhere, my friend. I got a couple more questions for you. Yep. Um, everybody else, as always, keep talking horror. Stay what you are. And we'll see you guys soon.